Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 530. We begin tonight with breaking news out of West Fargo, where multiple shots have been fired at officers at the Broadway Inn on Main Avenue. A perimeter has been set up. Everyone is being asked to stay out of the area for their own safety. Many other people were inside the motel when all of this started, but everyone has been safely evacuated. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop joins us live near the standoff with more. Ashley. Good evening. We're about on the southeast side of the roadway in about a block or two away from it. Exactly. Now, here's a recap of what kind of happened this afternoon. Police got a call about 130 or just after that time that a man saw another man in the hotel through the window having a gun, a handgun of some sort, reported it to police. Police came to check on the man. Now, when the police arrived on scene, we know and tried to make contact with the man. From what we know, shots were fired. So they began to immediately evacuate the hotel. Um, the man made a threat to police that he is not going to go down without police going down with him. And police are taking this threat very seriously. And as he said that, more shots were fired. Now, we don't know how many shots were in total fired. We know that, like I said, police are taking this seriously. The SWAT was called in and a Bearcat too. Now, West Fargo Police Chief Mike Wrighton believes that this man has only one handgun and it is the, his priority to obviously keep the people in the community along with his officers safe and they are trying to do that. The officers are going to be in a position of uh, cover and uh, they'll be using whatever means necessary to protect themselves and others. Now, we did see SWAT enter the building this afternoon fully in their attire. And what we know is that the man is confined to one hotel room. When we're hearing reports on the west side of the building, we're going to continue to monitor this situation as police take it very seriously. In West Fargo, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. All right. Thanks, Ashley. They have identified the man, but they are not releasing his name. They believe he is from the outside of the FM area. Also, Red Cross volunteers are helping those who are displaced from the motel. Be sure to stick with Valley News Live at valleynewslive.com for updates on this breaking story. Tonight, we're showing you just how quickly your information can get ripped off by credit card skimmers. Fargo police are warning the public about criminals using credit card skimmers to steal your own information. They're investigating what they believe is an operation of multiple people at multiple locations. Police have been getting more reports from people that their credit cards have been used while they still have it in their possession. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Nicole Johnson shows us how it only takes just a second. Take a look at this surveillance video. Police in Florida are looking for these two men. Watch the one in the white t-shirt. He's caught quickly placing a credit card skimmer over the machine. Did you see that? Yeah. What did you think? Pretty slick. That took about a second. Yep. They know what they're doing. Have you ever thought that something like that could happen? These days, I'm not surprised by much. Let's watch that one more time. This time, a little slower. Police say these two men were working together. One distracts the cashier. But yeah, he takes a plastic insert and lays it over the top of it in like three seconds. So what do you think about it? Uh, it's a huge problem. You know, it shouldn't shouldn't be that easy. Eric Wilkinson works at Best Buy in the mall and says after watching this video, he's going to be more cautious. So what do you think the solution is? Um, more awareness, um, having registers checked, you know, once an hour, just like bathrooms, because if it's an issue, then, you know, we need to be on top of it. So do you think it could happen to anyone, though? Oh, I'm sure it can. Yeah. Like I always tell my daughter, you, when you go out, always look around. In this case, police say using a chip card could have helped. All the rest of the old crimes come here, so I suppose that one, and we better be more careful. There are many other ways criminals can get your information. Police say the best way to combat these crimes is to monitor your check and debit card and report anything that seems wrong. Nicole Johnson, Valley News Live. Anyone who has information about credit card skimming taking place in this area should call the Fargo Police Department. Due to tremendous demand for Garth Brooks tickets, the system was overloaded and sales have been suspended. Tickets will go on sale again next Thursday, March 24th at 10 a.m. 
in the morning. If you've got tickets today, those tickets will be honored. Garth Brooks has scheduled two Fargo shows, one for Friday, May 6th, and another for Saturday, May 7th. Both shows are at 7 p.m. at the Fargo Dome, but there is a possibility of a Sunday show as well. Spring starts tomorrow, so we'll be, we'll be seeing uh, some spring-like weather tomorrow. Let's go ahead and check in with meteorologist Justin Fanfarilli. Justin? And thank you, Christine. Good evening, everybody. Well, uh, we saw most of the warm air when we were technically in winter. As spring starts, we've cooled down and saw some snow out there. Let's take a look at the temperatures right now. We're at 35 in Fargo, 34 Wabaton, Fergus Falls, Detroit Lakes, 37 Crookston, Grand Forks, and near 30 Jamestown Valley City and Oaks. So a little warmer compared to yesterday at this time. And just like yesterday, we're seeing snow showers around the area. Uh, they've been just north of Fargo, approaching south of Finley, north of Valley City, and we're also seeing some more snow showers developing now as you approach Walcott, just south of I-94. The heaviest and steadiest snow into central North Dakota, from Minot down to Bismarck, where they're seeing a couple or a few inches of snow from this one. So as we go through uh, this evening, cloudy skies with some snow showers possible as temperatures fall into the lower 30s. The wind not really that bad, mainly between 5 and 10 from the north. We're going to see the snow showers stick around to start the weekend. Then as we uh, start next week, warming up and drying out. But more moisture chances are on the way. We'll tell you about that coming up later in the newscast. Alrighty. Thanks, Justin. A man is facing possible charges after allegedly trying to stab a bouncer at a Fargo bar. Witnesses told police Barry Richards showed up at Duffy's Tavern last night and was extremely intoxicated. When staff said they would not serve him and asked him to leave, he pulled out a knife. Richards was hurt in the incident. He was treated and released at a local hospital and then booked into the jail. Police are looking into evidence left behind at a burglary scene in Valley City. It happened at the Central Avenue Pharmacy this morning. It's unknown how many suspects are involved at this time, but police say they left behind evidence, which is now at the state crime lab where it's being processed. Police have not released what was stolen or what evidence was recovered. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Valley City Police Department. Here's an update to a story that we first brought you last night about a local mother pleading with Facebook to get her underage son's account taken down. Facebook requires users to be at least 13 years of age to create an account, but some children lie about their age. That happened to Melody Anderson. Her 12-year-old son with special needs created an account, but forgot the login information and then couldn't delete it. A spokesperson from Facebook says the account for Anderson's son has been taken down. Anderson filed several reports with Facebook, but after no action, she called our whistleblower hotline. After our story aired yesterday, Facebook deleted Anderson's son's account. And if you need help investigating an issue, be sure to call our whistleblower hotline at 701-237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case. Low prices in the ag and oil industries have dealt North Dakota a big blow to its economy. The state is now dealing with a $1 billion shortfall. However, there is a growing effort to help stabilize our state's economy with high-paying jobs and high-paying tech jobs. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us what's happening. Unmanned aircraft systems, drone research and development is taking off in the valley with the construction of the Grand Sky Complex at the Grand Forks Air Force Base. It's already spurred smaller companies like Skyscopes to jump in the business of using drones to inspect wind turbines and power lines. It's better to, to uh, fly one of those in terms of cost um, and because it uh, reduces liability to uh, danger to human life. And the experts say drone development could be the key to developing high-tech jobs and creating a much more stable economy. The potential is very high in uh, the UAS industry and North Dakota has zeroed in on that industry and it's a natural because the two biggest users of UAS technology, the sensor information, is agriculture and energy. Other companies like True North Equipment are also adding high-tech jobs by hiring people to train farmers to use all those high-tech gadgets on today's ag equipment that allows precision application of seed, fertilizer, and chemicals. Producers are really getting into the, um, getting into understanding what that technology can do for them, understanding how it impacts their operation, understanding how it may be able to save them a little money, make them more money. 
A recent study by CompTIA shows that overall high-tech jobs in North Dakota are growing at a rate of 3.9 percent a year compared to the national average of 3 percent. Plus, the experts say traditional high-tech development centers in California and Massachusetts are becoming overpriced for entrepreneurs. Well, especially entrepreneurs are looking for lower cost places to get into business and, and yet get significant market share. And I think places like North Dakota offer that opportunity. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Joe Vig says while the state could have done a better job in getting the creation of high-tech jobs started, it's now poised for some major growth. He says much of that growth is coming from eastern North Dakota. Longtime Fargo Police Lieutenant Joel Vettel is selected to head the Fargo Park District. Park Board President Mary Johnson tells Valley News Live the advisory board's decision was unanimous. Johnson says the full park board will vote on the appointment at its meeting next month. With that approval, she says there will be a contract negotiated and offered. He will replace longtime Park District Executive Director Roger Gress, who's retiring. From my standpoint, I, I couldn't be happier. I think this is an opportunity and really a challenge for me uh, to really step up and, and do and continue to try to be um, somebody that can, contributes to the community. Vettel will take over September 1st. If you own 